Live on KWAM 980 Radio. And I'm heading to the dog track to meet Eddie Mama. We're back at our core values of education, empowerment, and enrichment. Jordan? Oh my God! Are you a swinger? Apparently, I am. <laughs> oh, the swingers gonna be here. emailing you. It's the way you read it. It's the way you read it. No, do not email me if you are a swinger. Do not. <laughs> if you need relationship help, you can contact me. If you need swinging help, contact somebody else. At nine zero one two six zero five nine two six nine zero one two six zero five nine two six. That's for John. John Stewart. We're back. <laughs> For a good time, y'all. <laughs> this is not a nine one nine hundred number. I don't know this. <laughs> a rated G radio show. This is a mess. <laughs> no G. Oh, no they no just gonna turn me into a speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I have the weirdest job in the world. I love it. <laughs> I just never know from one day to the next what they're going to ask of me, and now I know it all. All I want to know are you going to marry all of the swingers, or you going to marry me? I'm marrying you. You're hotter than all them swingers. My name is Kim Davis, and I don't believe that kind of stuff. I'm just, not signing it. You just can't handle all this hotness, Miss Kim. That's all I know. All right, let's come on back down. <laughs> this is Domestic Violence Month, and the Family Safety Center is hosting the show today. We were talking about uh, signs and symptoms and uh, issues with domestic violence. I also learned uh, doing my research, uh, Jordan, that one in five women and one in 71 men in the U.S. have been raped in their lifetime by their partner mm -hmm. when they have suffered from domestic violence. That's what people don't realize. I'll hear so many people say, you know, oh, well, I don't feel sorry for domestic violence victims because, you know, they're choosing them to stay in those relationships. Well, that just makes my blood boil anyways. Mm -hmm. But then they don't realize, and they'll say, well, it's not like being sexually assaulted because you don't know that person. And they don't realize that the primary source of sexual assaults are intimate partners. Just because you've had a sexual relationship with somebody does not mean they own your body and can use you however they want to. Absolutely. I mean, look at Donald Trump. He even said that it wasn't possible for a man, you know, for a man to rape his wife. He did say How that. How ignorant are we as a society that he that gets say said? That. And this person is a leader, you know, in the Republican presidential. It just oh, makes wow. me sick to think that you can be that stupid and that, that ignorant and still be successful. It kills me. And just imagine they have millions of dollars being poured into his campaign and, and all the good we could do in the world with that amount of money I mean you know I tell people if they saw what we go through day in day out the Family Safety Center we have no funding issues like we need like a cops like reality show so people can just see mm -hmm. what happens in our very own city I think domestic violence people think oh well that doesn't happen in my neighborhood it doesn't happen to anybody I know mm -hmm. and one in four women one in nine men it happens to somebody you know you may Absolutely. not be aware of it but it's happening it doesn't change the thing just because you don't know it well let's run through the uh, um, all of the elements of domestic violence because people quickly equate physical violence mm -hmm. as a form mm -hmm. of domestic violence and that's it. And yeah, and that's the lie. obvious one, yeah. Right. So if you would, give them some and then we'll jump in and give them some other other signs for you to know in your relationship if you are a victim or an abuser or you're doing both. Yeah, I mean, there's the verbal and emotional abuse is a mm -hmm. huge, huge one. And, I mean, it's just put-downs. It's telling somebody, you know, for example, my ex, he was always telling me that I needed to work out more, that I needed to, you know, dress better, do this. You know, it's things like that, that constant day in and day in. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've said, you know, that breaks you down a lot faster than, you know, because for me, like, something could happen that would leave a bruise, and it would not hurt nearly as much as those words did. Yeah. Because the words never leave you, and they replay over and over again in your mind, and mm -hmm. you can't forget that. Mm -hmm. and it erodes the, the step of steam of the person. Mm -hmm. And then yes. they begin to believe the things that's told to them. Mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. if nobody wants you but me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm the only one that'll put up with you. I'm the only one that will love you. Mm -hmm. Because you're ugly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and all of those things. And people don't understand that all of that is domestic violence. Mm -hmm. All of that is domestic mm -hmm. violence. And also financial control is one yes. that people don't realize it is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, we hear it all the time. You know, somebody gives somebody, you know, a certain allowance, a certain amount. Mm -hmm. They, um, you know, monitor every penny that they spend. I mean, that is a huge form of control and abuse. Mm -hmm. You know what? I want to throw this in. Uh, checking your telephone. Mm -hmm. Going through your phone. <laughs> you have to monitor my phone calls and who you talking to, where you going. 
uh, you can't go home. I got to go with you. You got to be home at a certain time and all of that ownership type uh, mentality and behavior. If you check in your boo phone and you demanded that they tell you who they talking to when you walk in the room and they can't tell you, hey, baby, I call you right back without giving you a laundry list of why I got to get off the phone. You need to check yourself. Loose hell. The devil is alive. <laughs> Give me that phone. <laughs> Let me read the text message. Give me that phone. Let me see your phone, Eddie. Since Why we're swinging, I need to pick up on you. At night, crawling on the floor, trying to get to a nightstand to get my telephone and sneak it in the bathroom. It's called the art of war. You got to roll on your elbows when you're crawling. And then tiptoe, and then the cat going to say, Damn. What are you doing? What about? Or the dog say, Rawr, rawr, rawr. No, it's true. It is. I mean, it uh, is. It I is. could have to sneak and be secretive. You're doing something wrong. I mean, you know, that's just bottom line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember the J Lo movie? I believe was it enough? No. Oh, I love that yeah, movie. No, no. Oh my goodness! And the other movie, I think. Um, Boy next door. Or something she had. She played and she ran off and changed her identity. Both of them was kind of the same way, where she had to have the cans. Uh, in the cabin in a certain mm -hmm. way. Oh, uh, sleeping with out. the enemy. Yeah, sure. Well, that was a good one too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they don't want you to well, I mean, oh. you know, these these domestic violence. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. The one that's out now with with um, perfect gentleman, the perfect man. It's out now. The the black movie. I don't know. Oh. With Michael Ealy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sinai yeah. Latham and Michael Ealy. Domestic yeah. violence. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that you know that was domestic violence. Like, alert. When you brought up the other night, the color purple. I mean, I'm like you. I can't watch that. I yeah. cry hysterically. You know, I'm like you. It's not funny to me. It's, it's heartbreaking. Not. Oh my I didn't gosh. Realize me that. either. That's I late. can't stand Mister in the color purple. I hated, him. I, hated, I hated him for a long time, and I hated Lawrence Fishburne. Ike. For a long oh. time. Anime. Anime. I hated Ike. Eat the cake. Put some stank on it. Oh my God. Yeah. But, but he don't know what stank is. We have to tell you. But at Ask your mom in Arkansas. They know what Stanky is smoking them cigarettes. <laughs> the, the color purple scene, uh, sitting at the table. Yeah. When um, Sophie was talking. Sophia. Sophia was talking to Hoppo. Yeah. And the granddaddy hit the table. And he was talking to them and he was talking to Mr. Mm -hmm. And uh, the little kids were sitting there. The little boys were looking. They were, they were being taught right at that moment mm -hmm. how you control your wife or your woman. Mm -hmm. Right in that movie. So people missed all those elements mm -hmm. that went on in that time. Right. You see how they he gave his daughters away. Well, one is one not one spoiled. Mm -hmm. what? And, and then he spoiled them. The daddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I mean, like, really? Domestic violence, y'all. But that's that pink elephant mm -hmm. in families mm -hmm. that they hide and they don't want to talk about. But I think that um, people have to understand also that that they are an abuser, and most people won't own up to their behavior as being an abuser. They won't, absolutely. And a lot of times, I mean, like I said, it is something that they don't even know. I mean, I don't even know how much of it's denial as that that's all they've seen in their entire lives. Mm -hmm. And they just think, you know, somebody's being dramatic or that's healthy. You know, they just, you know, think, well, this is just how relationships are. This is how you fight. So, you mm -hmm. know, and we've even had, you know, it's hard for us because um, we have young girls tell us all the time that they don't believe their boyfriend loves them if he doesn't slap them. I've heard that before. Yeah, I mean, that is just heartbreaking for mm -hmm. us. And, we, you know, it's like, how do you, you know, break this when, you know, really having to teach them from absolute basic, you know, things that are and are not okay. You know, it goes so much. People think, you know, it's going to be these deep, big things, but it's very widespread. And, you know, we've heard, oh, well, you know, Chris Brown beat up Rihanna, but she must have done something because mm -hmm. he's fine. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. You know, it's just like, you know, victim blaming is a huge problem. Well, you re remember, we have 1 in 15 children are exposed mm -hmm. to the intimate partner violence each year. And 90% of the children eyewitness this violence. So if they witness this stuff, when they grow up, 90% now, they're going to be uh, more prone to do these type of things. But let's go back to the other piece about uh, uh, domestic violence in the workplace and uh, 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 the killings in, in, in workplaces of uh, victims. They have stats like from 2003 to 2008, they have 142 women were murdered in their workplace because of mm -hmm. domestic violence. I'm pretty sure that number's gone up since 2008. It's horrible. It is, yeah. and people don't realize. We've had, you know, instances in Memphis where that's happened. Yes. Um, 
you know, the Family Safety Center, we've done, you know, a fantastic job of enhancing victim safety, mm -hmm. and we've only lost one of our um, clients ever, and it That's was, good. she was murdered at her workplace, wow. but the judge didn't sign off on the order of protection, because wow. he didn't think she was in danger, because wow. she didn't have enough proof wow. to give, so yeah, so we were doing everything we could do on our end, mm -hmm. but then it came down to that, and they ended up not issuing the order of protection, and then he went to her workplace and killed her, wow. so they've been, a lot, you know, a lot more when we're sending it over, we haven't really had as much problem with that, but, you know, it's like you have to learn some hard lessons sometimes, because I think that people really you know, don't realize that this is, it's not rational. You can't look at this and say, you know, all the time, oh, 100%, you know, it's not black and white. And if a victim feels in danger, mm -hmm. I tend to think they are. Because, that you know, they have reasons and nobody knows what that person is like, like the victim does. I thought something good came out of the uh, documentary when the, um, the, the group that was there, Speak Out, mm -hmm. and one of them, they were survivors of domestic violence. And she said that it takes the lady almost eight times mm -hmm. to really leave the relationship. She leave, go back, leave, go back, leave, and go back. So as a supporter of somebody in domestic violence, you can't give up on them and just throw your hands or wash your hands with them. And something else came out, Joy, was that we have to better educate our elected officials mm -hmm. who handle these type of cases. For instance, the judge and the prosecutor to sign off on these restraining orders. Mm -hmm. We absolutely do, and we really have been very blessed. I feel like that our officials that we deal with, especially, they do try to educate themselves, and they call and they do defer to us on a lot of things, because I think it's more and more being seen as, you know, not, I think that people a lot of times think, you know, these things aren't as serious, and then if you really get down to it, the number one crime in Memphis is family crime. Yeah. So, you cannot say that, you know, oh, well, these are things that don't affect anybody but the victims. It affects their children, their co-workers, their mm -hmm. family, their friends. It really is hurting our entire community. Let's jump to race now. African American women mm -hmm. are victimized by intimate partners at a significantly higher rate than our white counterpart and mm -hmm. any other race. So, because here in Shelby County, we have what, 60% black here, 70% mm -hmm. black, something like this? Yeah, so 60. So, so how, what, what are the numbers at the Family mm -hmm. Safety Center white to black ratio? We primarily do see black women. Mm -hmm. That's our number one, you know, thing that walks through the door. So we, I mean, we can tell you, you know, yeah, that's what we're seeing day to day as well. And a lot of that is, you know, that, you know, it is what our primary, you know, if you're a majority, yeah, of course you're going to, but I do feel like our numbers do suggest that it is happening. And a lot of that is breaking, you know, um, traditional views of male and female dynamics. Yes, yes. That's a huge one, I feel like, because a lot of, you know, I think Gwen said the other night that a man, you know, told her, well, I do have a right to hit my wife mm -hmm. if she doesn't do. And, you know, you have to train people on a very basic level about these healthy dynamics because otherwise they, I mean, I really think people want to do better. I think you have to teach them better. And that's just reported now. Oh, yeah, I think it's so underreported. Absolutely. Yeah, to me, the one in four and one in nine is misleading, especially with men, because men don't tend to report it. Right. And they don't even recognize it as abuse. They think, oh, well, she loves me, and she's jealous, and it's cute, <laughs> and she, you know, parks her car behind you and won't let you leave, and she goes through your phone, <laughs> and she, you know, screams and yells at you in front of your friends, and it's because she loves you so much. <laughs> no, you're a victim of abuse. Like, this is not okay. Some guys just crave attention, right? They do, absolutely. We've had that. Some men, definitely, that... You know, it, I think it does make them feel needed, you know, right. at a point. You know, they kind of thrive on that drama. She still loves me, but, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and Quite it's, up. yeah, and they, you know, it kind of is, you know, they enjoy the drama of the relationship yeah. at some points, but the women are enjoying it too because they're perpetuating that. So, I, and I don't think they realize how damaging that is to both of them. You know, it seems like an exciting relationship and you're yeah. really causing huge amounts of damage to, you know, both of you and your family and your friends and everybody's having to put up with you in your crazy relationship. So, I know guys, you know, we mature so much slower than normally. And so we, we look at it like, oh, wow, I love the attention and the, you know, all this, you know, but then you're like, Oh, you know, you stop look at it. Mm -hmm. You're right. It's totally wrong. It's so, so what about the LGBTQ uh, domestic violence numbers uh, within that you get reported to the center and all of the above? No. And when you answer that question, it's a two-part question. Your services that yeah, you are services. extending to mm -hmm. the LGBTQ community, that was one of the reasons that we partner up to mm -hmm. bring the awareness and to help promote the services to the community that you are inclusive and diverse in your services. 
Absolutely. We serve everybody. You mm -hmm. know, domestic violence doesn't discriminate, neither do we. We definitely know that it's happening in the exact same rates, if not a little bit higher in some cases, mm -hmm. like with transgender, they're yes. the most vulnerable. Okay. Um, and they actually have the fewest resources available to them in a lot yeah, of communities absolutely. because of housing issues uh -huh. and people, you know, shelters will get confused and, oh, well, where do we, how we classify this person, how they identify, or, you, you know, and it's, they face a tremendous amount of discrimination. And so what we've done is try to make all of our services where that isn't even a part of